Um, hope you're all well. You look well. Uh, so we'll call the meeting to order. ADRB 20-04 uh, special use application for expansion of existing Masonic temple uh, by 2,280 square feet. Uh, with associated parking, landscaping, and drainage. Uh, it's on 637 Pequot Trail, Stonington, obviously. And um, uh, with that, uh, the applicant can uh, start the meeting. Welcome. Thanks. If I can just um, jump in just to remind people of some virtual meeting things. The meeting is being recorded um, to be on the town's website, YouTube and all that. Um, and because of the virtual meeting, if people can try to remember to say their names whenever they speak, which is something I always forget, but that's uh, that's the goal. Uh, thanks, so Mr. Fanner, I will turn it over to you. Okay, Bob Fanner. The, uh, the temple, the Coastal Masonic Temple. Um, I don't know what in particular you want, but I'll, I'll I'll give you a little history, and I'll explain what we did, if that's okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, for those that you don't know, probably more familiar than I, uh, the the the, the, the temple building or the grains, I think, it was built in the approximately 33. Uh, the uh, Masonic Temple bought it in 89 and has retained, retained it ever since. Um, the people that use the, the grains, uh, a, a couple organizations, uh, and not very often, the, the, the grains itself meets what, once a month. Coastal Lodge meets twice a month. The other, let's see, the, the other lodge, the lodge number 11 meets once every month, except for July and August. And uh, uh, these meetings are small. And uh, anyway, not much traffic. And, and, and of course, the Pilgrim Church meets there on alternate Sundays. That is the idea of the usage. Um, the grains, you know, built in 1933. We, although it is uh, fairly nice part of it, it uh, needs a lot of work. So we, uh, the, the, the lodge uh, gave us a, a picture of what they wanted to do to expand the use inside. And uh, I think we got a, a, a very good, very nice mix. If you have the plans, you know, we have views of, of all directions, and I think there's a, there was a, uh, I drafted up a uh, rendering of it also. So we uh, we uh, are uh, saving the front parking lot, not even expanding it very much, uh, and, and that was uh, to, to, to uh, stop the continuous runoff from the gravel parking lot into the wetlands below. So we went to wetlands and got a pool for that. Uh, and uh, the other thing I would mention is we don't have much landscaping. There isn't any there now, but uh, there's never anybody around to maintain it. So we're afraid that if we had any kind of uh, land, exotic or extensive landscaping, uh, it would not be maintained. So we put in a few bushes it look nice next to next to the building, if you can see on the plan. Uh, that's basically it. I, I'll, I'll be glad to answer any or all questions that you have about anything with, with the, uh, the uh, site. So, um, if the board wants to see them, I can put the plans on the screen also. Um, their application asked for a waiver of um, stamped architectural plans and landscape architect plans. Um, zoning wise, the, that west row of parking, that rest row of parking might be 
uncertain because of the buffer requirements. Not sure if that will be there. Um, zoning regs don't have a good parking standard for this type of use. So what the minimum parking is that they need is a bit sort of to be worked out. Um, and uh, that's about it for that. Okay. Uh, you all can see me now. Mike, you can you hear me? Is that correct? Keith? Yeah, there is it's visual now, Michael. Uh, Michael, you can you hear me? Can you see me? You, you have a visual? Okay. All right. Sorry, it's just hard to hear. Oh, sorry. I wonder if I'm too close. I don't know. This is difficult. <laughs> well, do you want to start with some questions, uh, member? Leslie? Chris? Um, I'm just uh, uh, just give me a second. I'm just trying to get a, my head around the the, the the scope a little bit better. Just one second, sorry. Okay. Leslie, are you? Yeah, it doesn't really show the existing building. I can tell, and then how it's expanded. Are you are you residing the entire structure or just your addition? No, we're restart. We're we have reciting the entire structure with new windows and, and the old one. Everything is new roofing and the whole thing, mm -hmm. and, and, and and brick and stuff. Is all together in the front. Yeah, uh, everything is uh, I'm sure it's A4, for example, if you have another plan. Uh, new roof, new siding, new windows. We want it all to bloom together. What does your stone veneer look like on that front side? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The stone veneer? Oh, yeah. Wait a second. Let me get it. You have to forgive me because I did these plans in 2017. I haven't looked at them much enough. In a little while. Let me get it. Hey, Keith. Chris. Um, Keith, can you hear me? Yes. Just a quick question. Did you say something in the beginning about there's they're requesting a waiver for for some aspect of the plans? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, the usual requirement is when plans come before you, they have uh, plans stamped by an architect and a landscape architect if they have a site plan component. Uh, but you can request a waiver for th cases where it makes sense. Uh, so they've requested a waiver here of the uh, stamped architectural and landscape architectural plans. I, 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 so what, what's the justification for the request of the waiver? I'm, I'm, I mean, the plans as I see them obviously seem to be lacking a, you know, a lot of detail. I just, um, you know, why is this particular uh, project, uh, you know, why should it qualify for, for the, this type of waiver? Are you asking me? Asking anybody that can answer <laughs> the question. Well, first of all, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer surveyor, structural engineer as well. Uh, uh, and first of all, uh, you don't need a landscape architect if we're not doing any landscaping. We're not even we're not even adjusting the landscape around the building. It's going to stay the same. No filling, no. And you know, the only landscape we're going to do is, is in front of the, the building we tighten. We're going to put a few bushes in. And like I said before. 
they don't meet off enough. They're, they they just don't have the people to do any kind of landscape. They're having a hard enough time mowing the lawn. But that that's why. And I don't know what other landscaping you could do in the front of the building. Uh, it's pretty nice the way it is. As far as uh, an architecture designer building, this is what the lodge wanted. I certainly, you know, I've done, I wouldn't say hundreds, but I've done many, many, many of these uh, projects, uh, Mike and I. And so, uh, anyway. And usually a plan can be done by an engineer or an architect. I, I, yeah, I'm definitely not questioning your your credentials. It's just for me to be able to see on paper, you know, it, it's difficult with the level of detail on on the plan. So, I think the reason behind, uh, you know, from from our perspective uh, for architectural review, the reason behind having an architect or requesting an architect to draw the plans is more for the visual representation not necessarily you know the engineering and the structural side of it um so that that's just kind of my concern at this point i feel like i don't know i'm trying to understand this project for the board for because i, I want to you know, in my position, I, I feel like I need to treat every project fairly and with the same credentials. So, so I'm I'm having a little trouble understanding what makes this project unique. Uh, there is 13, 14 pages to the plan, plus another three for the site plan. And on those plans, there is. Uh, and I've seen millions of plans for architects as well as any. There's not any more detail on here than an engineer near fit would have. Uh, and, and usually your architects are less specific than we were as engineers. But uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, we, we, we got the design. Uh, this is what they wanted to do. We tweaked it so it, it, it all worked together. And we do it as you can see it. Um, that's all I can say. That I don't know what detail that you think is lacking. Uh, and maybe I can help, but the, at all the details, this is, this is ready for construction, except for some of the mechanical stuff, which we'll give out to a mechanical engineer. Well, how about uh, maybe if I approach it, this my question this way. Uh, do you have samples of, uh, I think Leslie was actually getting to this, of, of like of the stone veneer or the siding? Um, let me just look at the note here. You know, the, do you have the siding and the veneer? Person siding. Uh, the, the stonework, they, they haven't decided yet on what kind of uh, uh, stonework, but we just show the details of what it is. Uh, I, no, that I can't answer because they, uh, they haven't as of yet. And that would be the only thing that would be different uh, besides the standard window, standard shingles, standard siding, is the stonework that would require. Uh, 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 some kind of uh, input, and that would be the input from uh, from uh, the, the fellows that are doing it with the temple. Chris, can I? We, we didn't do they they haven't made up their mind. Uh, hi, it's Michael McKinley. I follow up with a comment there, Chris. Can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah go ahead, Michael. Okay. <laughs> um, we, I think Chris and uh, Leslie, we, over these years, uh, um, have had good reason to have an architect and a landscape architect to 
involved in projects that are uh, not not as as big or complex as this. So it's not really the, the size of the project. Um, and as, to your point, we very seldom uh, have have waived the requirement. And it's it's there to make sure that we have the design expertise, which I think you were getting at, both in terms of architectural design and landscape. And we've been seeing that the landscape concepts in resolving parking, um, you know, natural versus human-made environments, uh, appropriate planning is is critical to the success of um, of, of these public projects. So this is very public, and it, I think it's it's civic, and also the architects in particular, um, uh, some of them that have come before us really understand the historic uh, context and local context um, and the scale. And that's, and, and Mr. Planner, um, that is why we involve architects um, because, uh, you know, if, if we just pick and choose when we do that, then we don't really have a standard. You see? Uh, Keith Bryan's here. Um, one of the things that differentiates this plan from some other parking lots is that because it's sort of an existing parking area, there might not be the need for as much landscaping zoning wise. Um, so that's one of the things and it's a little hard to discern because it's an existing site and the parking spaces are unmarked where the existing parking spaces begin and end. So if someone were to be building this from scratch, Zoning would say you need this many trees, you need this much landscaping. With this, it's a little harder to to uh, put a put a handle on that. So that's why I think part of it that the landscaping is a little more uh, loosely defined. And these plans, because ADRB is sort of the first stop when someone submits to PZC, sometimes the plans haven't gone through a full zoning review, and those questions are a bit unanswered when it comes here. Leslie, do you have a, Michael McKinley here. Leslie, do you have a, some enlightenment? Well, um, yeah, there's, I'm wondering what the railing material is on the front railing there. And then I see a full story of concrete foundation on the back side of the building before you get to shingles. And I don't know if, if we really want to see, I mean, I know it's on the back of the building, but um, the front looks nice, but what's the material that we're using for the railings um, there? And what's the stone? Because I don't want to see some stamped concrete yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael McKinley. Uh, I, Leslie, I my opinion would be um, pretty decisively that we have to back up here and um, and and. Uh, Look at having the a, an architect and a landscape architect make a an effort to um, uh, provide us with adequate drawings so that this can um, move forward and it, and it can be moved forward very quickly. But I don't think that what's presented here um, would um, would really uh, set a, 
a, a tempo or an architecture, even though Pequot Trail is rural. I, I think really that when it comes down to it, this this uh, um, um, this would be a uh, uh, a very poor example for future development along Pequot Trail architectural. And I think there's a lot of possibilities. We could certainly uh, uh, make some suggestions as to scale and history and maybe preserving the existing volume of the historic structure and adding to it. Um, the way it's drawn up now, the project is is really more of a, a parking lot um, that you'd find in a strip mall, okay, that um, introduces the building and connects it to Pequot Trail. And that's, well, it's not necessarily a good solution there. I mean, this is a very rural area. I mean, perhaps if this were Route 1 and there were no other choices, um, but, you know, um, th this directly, uh, you know, this reminds me of all the bad design um, in terms of site and some architecture that they just sort of haphazardly has, you know, occurred on Route 1. Now, I, I don't know if you all think of that, but I'll stop talking. But um, I, I think my, my opinion is pretty clear. Uh, Crystal Laney again. Um, yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with what Michael was saying. I really didn't get a chance to develop my my uh, opinion on the the design and some aspects of it. I, I don't have a problem with, but I, I, I almost am having I'm getting the point of granting a uh, you know, granting a pass on on the uh, the, the landscape architect and the and the architect on the overall design just because i i can't understand why this project you know justifies that i think that issue by itself I, I, you know i would have a hard time um moving past that but then just getting into the design itself i think i think looking at the design and looking at the plan as they're presented um, doesn't necessarily bolster that that argument, um, you know, f for us to uh, grant that waiver. So I, I really think that uh, that this this project needs both. And uh, uh, one more comment about the landscaping. I think the idea that because there's no one there to maintain the plants um, isn't really a reason to not have plants. There's plenty of uh, shrubbery and trees out there that really don't need any maintenance and they just you know, thrive on their own. So um, I wouldn't want it to be just a big parking lot with a box in the middle of it. That, that seems like what we've got here. Um, Jenny Brumman. I would, I would agree with Chris Delaney in that I don't, it, it seems like it would set a very poor precedent to allow all these waivers uh, when there doesn't appear to be a reason. That's all. Uh, Keith Bryan's here. Um, Mr. Fanner, um, earlier the board was asking for more detail on the site plans. And maybe one of the issues is you mentioned that the site plans had many sheets to them, but all we had submitted was only the landscaping plan, which was sheet uh, 3A. So maybe some of the site plan details um, are answered on some of those other sheets, if those could be provided. Let me interject something here. 
Um, I got the impression uh, that, uh, although I don't agree with it, but I have an impression that you want a landscape architect and an architect to uh, look over those plans and give your opinion from their point of view. Again, I'm only an engineer, even though I've done this for quite a while. I don't disagree. And, uh, and some things I hear you don't understand. Uh, some things I don't understand from you that uh, in the process, uh, why you would want some architectural structures when the general, uh, um, like the stone, what color stone or what have you, what color is. I do understand how old it is and, and keeping that concept, which we did. But in all in all, I would think the way you're speaking that uh, if, if they want to continue, they should come back with an architect and a landscape architect and some samples if they want to continue. Am I reading it right? My, I really have to get the process of what's written as our procedure. And we don't want an architect to look it over. We want an architect to just, uh, with a reasonable thought process, and then we we can't go into the details here because we'd be critiquing your work as opposed to their work. So that you know that wouldn't help you out. So you, you know we've had uh, recently you know the last project that we approved was a metal story a complex of metal storage buildings on Route One, and they came in with an architect and they made visual presentations with elevations, pers perspectives, and talked about the design process. And so, you know, that arguably is much less conspicuous and public and civic than, um, than your project. So, you know, we're looking for the, we're looking for the design input from those professionals. Just like you have design put as input as civil engineer. I understand what you're saying, but that isn't up to me. But I'll explain your feelings to the to the temple and uh, and uh, get their reaction. If they, if they want to get one, he wants to investigate it uh, and, and and see if he wants to change anything, and then present it to you that. Uh, that's beyond the scope of what I, you know, what I was hired for. Uh, a lot of your concerns, I think, are there. The only concerns that you have is uh, the, 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 how do you keep the historical thing of the, of the Grange building, which I think we did. But uh, uh, again, I understand what you're saying. I will pass it on to them. Uh, and uh, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, <laughs> I can only do what I do, and if, if you want something else, which is fine, uh, and I'll just put it on to them. Sort of, you know, uh, anyway, I will just pass it on to them, and we'll get back to you before the next meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, am I reading what you want? I mean, I just don't want to get an architect. He would look at it, put his input into it. And uh, uh, and then uh, tell you what his input was or is, and what he suggested, as well as a landscape architect. That's correct. Do, right. do you want? To, would you like me to go ahead and? Do, well, I'm going to go ahead and do that. If, if you want to just continue with the next meeting. Yeah, I think it means having them give it, give the plants a fresh look, so they're not just saying, "Oh, yeah, it's fine," and go back. You know, put a fresh eyes on it, and that way. I know exactly what you're coming from. Okay. And, and, and I don't disagree with any of it. Okay. All right. You want to? Uh, is there a motion to, to close the public part of this hearing? We can move on. So motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
All right. Hi. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flanders. Thank the you. hearing is closed. <clears throat> All right. As, um, how many of us are on now here? Uh, there are four. Mr. Planner left, right? Banner? Mr. Right. Planner. Okay. Um, would you all want to have just a bit of discussion on this? Or, uh, I would think it might make sense. Yeah, I, I think I think you're all you're all right. It's um, I was a little puzzled when I saw all these waivers, but you know we've had so many submissions where they have actual samples of those of the materials that they're using on the exterior, and that's that's really nice to see. I think but, it's a very it's a very visible building on Route 1 and, and historic and I think loved by the community. So it, it should be treated by an architect, I think. Yeah, I, I, I certainly would agree. Um, not, you mean not, not all architects are gonna come in with work that we like either, but uh, they'll have right. a much better chance than, uh, um, you know, than someone that's uh, maybe used to, I think he said that he's done whatever, 40 or 50 of these. I don't know what B's is, you know, I mean, what, it looks like a cross between a nursing home, uh, 1950s and a, and a daycare center. And, uh, the the history is it's you know they're not expanding it the the history is completely obliterated I mean who knows I had to look at this for a few minutes before I could figure out where the existing building is I mean it's just might as well it's a brand new project in terms of the exterior it has nothing to do with um, what you know what you mean at least I feel um, has some real significance I um, mean the building is I mean one one date that I saw was ni 1911 he said something about 1930s didn't he um, yeah and that's what the tax card says is 1930s but that's all I uh, have to go I by think yeah, I think it potentially could be older than that. Not that that's you know what we rest our our um, analysis on, and but I mean it, it really is uh, it's very charming, right? And um, it, it not not only the building but the the site and the the edge the wood woodland edges. It's really part of a kind of a woodland ecology, kind of you know very. Historic Grange. Somebody that had some sense as a designer would leave the volume, you know, it's just kind of a standard, and add to it so that they respected the, the volume, the height, and the history of it. And uh, I mean, we can't design it, but that would be a much more reasonable approach. Um, so it wasn't, I mean, this is. So it was respected and it, it was uh, continued, you know, it was kind of turning a chapter in the architecture as opposed to just devouring it with um, right. a, uh, you know, strip mall kind of mentality. I mean, just to be brutal, that was just terrible. Just, you know, we would have been probably all tar and feathered by the people on Pequot Trail, especially right. Chris. <laughs> The man, his man did not seem to really understand what was expected of the lodge to go through the process. He didn't seem to understand the process. Well, yeah, I agree, Michael. I would have.
you know, feel like they either they weren't taking the process, either they weren't taking the process seriously or they were just just didn't understand the process. Uh, you know, I don't know what was going on there for sure, but um, I was I was obviously confused in the beginning as far as what the justification for all the waiver requests for were for. And I was hoping that, you know, there was going to be something that was, you know, some big piece of information that was presented that that gave them, you know, the, the, the right to get all these waivers. But there really obviously there wasn't. It just seemed like they they didn't fully understand the process. And I think a lot of it, too, is. From what I understand, being a nonprofit, you know, it's the funding issue, too. You know, they were considering themselves not the same as some commercial developer who could afford all this stuff. So they were trying to do what they could do. Mark Mo is a member of the Grange. Remember, he said that he's a member of the lodge, actually it's true. said that last time. Right. Uh, you're, you're, you're right. And I actually, at first, for some reason, I thought he was doing the drawings. And then when I got the email, I, I, I kept scrolling through, you know, looking for something additional than what, what was there. Um, but apparently he, he wasn't involved. Yeah, I think he said that nobody contacted him about it. He didn't know about it until he saw it come up on the agenda. But they probably just didn't want to pay the money to hire an architect or landscape architect. So they're, you know, the engineer knows structure. So just wrap a box around it and yeah. put shingles on it. You know? I don't know. I, who does want to pay? <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it's bears a striking resemblance to the, 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 the daycare that I bring my kids to in South County Commons in, in uh, over in Rhode Island. You know, I, I, that's the first thing I thought was that it actually reminded me of that, it, which is in kind of a semi strip mall, you know, environment. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I just felt like th there were just yeah. they, were, they were way too far away from any sort of serious uh, consideration. I mean, the, even the fact that some decisions hadn't even been made yet. Right. Yeah, the, you know, the way I look at that, uh, which is, is Chris there? No. <laughs> Watch Chris. Um, he's still showing up as here. Okay. Spinning and spinning and spinning. Okay. Maybe what about spinning. what about some other problems. web meeting, uh, Keith? What about like Zoom or some of the other ones that um, seem to be a little. Zoom has too many. Zoom has too many security issues. So um, our IT department has. Uh, pretty much established that we use WebEx for these. I think Zoom might be a little more user friendly, but. Um, there's a lot, of, there's password protection with it. You, know, you can make it private. Yeah. They kind of corrected that after a big backlash initially. Right, a lot of uh, Zoom bombing and things like that. Yeah, GoToMeeting is another one that I've done that seems to be pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. But when are we going to get into a building where we can see people face to face? Because there's people on the board that don't do this and can't participate, right? Right. I, you know, I'm hoping we can soon, especially because this board doesn't usually draw 100 people like some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it just depends on, you know, the reopening schedule. Um, ideally, a different meeting room. Than Stonington Town Hall, where we're all jammed in there. Yep. It also depends on the comfort of the your host. You know whether it's the school department or human services. Uh, you know when they're comfortable and having a bunch of the public in their building. Yeah, there's always so many echoing problems with these meetings half the time especially the planning and zoning ones where you have more people who just call up participate and sometimes you almost 
you almost can't do it because no one can hear anything. Well, if there are meetings that are open to the public, what's the concern about having something so secure if it's open to the public anyway? For why these meetings? The, yeah, why would the IT guy say something like Zoom isn't as secure, but who cares if it's a public meeting anyway? Well, I think it's because of like, you know, the Zoom bombing and the people who uh, post inappropriate stuff at the meeting and I don't think you, that happens anymore. You get passwords just like you do here, and yeah, they took care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow we're we're committed to WebEx somehow. There's not, yeah, there's no feedback now, so it seems it sounds fine now. Yeah, I think it was uh, Mr. Fanner's setup, where it was okay when I muted him, but when I had to unmute him, that's when it all started. Well, it sounds like they'll come back next month with something he said he'd try to get it for next month. Yeah, if they can get an architect, landscape architect on board. Uh, to work fast. Might have to something then. Yeah. yeah, they'll have to work hard in uh, <laughs> three weeks, maybe, something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, Godspeed. Shall we? Uh, any other business that we need to discuss here, other than the? Uh, just so George, George um, resigned. George Wingblade after two meetings. That's right. He did resign. I think um, you know he wasn't comfortable with the whole virtual meeting thing. Wow. Well, who is? Right. <laughs> it's awful. We, it kind of is. Have, everybody gets to see your house. Ah. <laughs> or my house. Or anyway. Chris's house. This is house. Everybody's house. Yeah. We have to uh, approve the minutes from last month. Yes. yes. Um, I read them through. I think they're fine. I think they're fine. I don't, I wasn't there, so I will okay. pass. Um, I move that we approve the meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Ab abstain. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Um, the next meeting, if we have any applications, would be the second Monday of July. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't have anything yet. I'm okay. not sure if this will be back. Mm -hmm. When uh, when does um, the seaport start doing all their demolition and Project there. Do they have to wait for the septic approval or anything? You know, tearing um, it, down. Was in, it was in the newspaper that because of the um, the pandemic, they're going to wait a year to uh, do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else. Okay. All right, I, I move we adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, all right, nice seeing you all. Good to see you. Take care, Good everyone. Enjoy time. the sunshine. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Bye. Bye now. Thank you.